coming to the end of the season now with the squashes. Very nearly harvest time, not quite harvest time yet. A lot of damage being done to the leaves as they die, as they die back. We've got um, down a uh, mildew. We've got yellowing leaves. We've got rotting leaves. But we can start to see the squashes now a little bit more clearly and see what the harvest is going to be like. We've also got some late ones coming on. Um, a little late sort of gem squash coming here. A few others. Got a really nice under this leaf here. Really nice big blue banana, which is probably just about ready to harvest. Very nearly. But we have some others that are coming late onto the scene. There's a, a Hubbard, but down there we've got a, a Muscade de Provence that wasn't there before that just suddenly appeared in the last couple of weeks, which is nice because I didn't think I was going to get any from them. But um, looks like I might get one if it, if it manages to hold itself together. The other one that I didn't think I was going to get anything off of and I've got two of the plants is the sweet dumpling. And I just noticed just before I started filming that there's a couple of them down there. Try and get them in focus so you can see them a little bit better. So they are, they're small, they're supposed to be small. In fact, there's another one there. And another one. So they had nothing on them. Unfortunately, they were going like that for a long time. There's another Hubbard that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> but they were going like that for a long time. Um, but now they seem to be progressing. A couple of small curries. The curries are probably ready. I could probably lift them now. I've already lifted three squash. I lifted a... The little candy roaster that I had in my other bed and I lifted one of the um, blue Hungarians and one of the blue and sorry the, the other big candy roaster basically because it was getting too big they were all getting too big and and I wanted to take them out before they got damaged or started to rot from well where they were because they were right on the edge near the path and um, so they're curing in the back of my car <laughs> at the moment Ready, I see another blue banana and a butternut. Now that is a turn up for the book. So I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see it. A butternut squash. I didn't think I was gonna get any of them either. So all of the ones that I thought I was going to, I wasn't going to get anything off of and suddenly late in the season are producing fruit. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to get to the point where they'll mature out here, but there's something to work with anyway. So if anything does occur, if they do get big enough to be usable, then I can take them indoors to cure them um, if things get cold pretty quickly. But at the moment, everything seems to be okay. But as you can see from, I'll show you from this side, There's sort of big gaps appearing now in the sea of squashes. Um, that pumpkin over there, that blue Hungarian, is absolutely huge. If I could find a way in without squashing plants to get a bit closer to it, you could see that's probably about twice the size of a football. And there's one in there as well, which is hidden kind of behind leaves. There's a gem squash sitting on top of it as well. That one's about half the size of that one, and it's massive as well. So not too bad, actually. And this bed over here, the curries that I didn't think would come to much have actually they turned out all right. They're not bad, they're tiny, they'll do a meal. Each one of them will do a meal, probably, that one there as well. This one was the early season. Blue Hungarian, unfortunately, it was punctured in the bottom, some pests got into it, and so I had to take it off. But, 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 another one grew in its place. So, we'll see if this one can kind of 
hurry up to get a little bit more rain. Over there we have, um, I think, that is a Muskie de Maroc. So that is the other one. That's the last one of the ones I thought wasn't gonna wasn't gonna come. And well, if there's one growing there. Whether it'll come to anything, I don't know. Again, late in the season, maybe these ones need a, a warmer. Maybe these ones should have been in the polytunnel this year. Maybe it might be an idea to put them in the polytunnel next year. The Maroc, the Provence and the Sweet Dumpling. Maybe they like a, a slightly warmer climate. So let me try doing that. This is the Maroc plant, as you can see here. There's another couple of fruits coming on it there. It's quite healthy actually now. Because that's the way it was from the beginning. This kind of yellow sandpapery textured thing. But now these leaves are are healthy. Maybe maybe this is the time of year that they like. Maybe they like this kind of cooler weather. They didn't like the warmer weather. And we'll see what happens with them. There's another one there. So the Maroc, the sweet dumpling, which is this is another one of. And there are one or two on here, but I don't think they're coming to anything. That one's rotted, I think. Yeah, that one's rotted. But I think there's a few more around the corner. Over here, in fact, yeah, there is. You can see one under there. So that's not too bad a return. Over the other side, we had a few other kind of surprises. And we'll go over and look at them now. Okay, what's well, no surprise at this time of year is that we've got all of these coming in. These are the little fire. Oh, the fireweed that grows outside the plot over there. And in the next plot which is un unkempt a little bit at the moment it all just blows in and I end up with this carpet of it to deal with but it's okay at this stage I can just hoe it all out and that's that's good dandelions different story they came earlier in the season but they were all kind of hidden from view up to this point because the squashes were quite heavy but this side I knew I already had a buttercup, which is over here. Behind all of these leaves. Get them out of the road. I knew that buttercup was there. I don't think that one's too healthy, actually. I knew that there was one under here. There's a buttercup here. What I didn't know was that next to the buttercup was this big blue banana growing. And that's, that's a bit of a surprise at the end of the season. Now, that one shouldn't be too much longer. But my very strange gem squash has continued to be very strange in fact getting even stranger that for something that should be tennis ball sized and another one there that's quite a surprise to me they've grown all the wrong shape the ones in the other bed are fine so these ones are definitely crossed with something so it'll be interesting if I save the seeds off of these what'll come of these ones next year I like to do that every year. I like to save a, a surprise variety. Um, as you can see, all those fireweed growing everywhere. You know, at this time of year, we can't we can't help it here. I cleared this bed of most of them, but they still keep on persisting. So that's annoying. But just to finish up, this is the squash plant that was under the under the fleece with all the other stuff. Everything's kind of tools lying around. Everything's kind of half half done at this point. I'm waiting on these sort of coming good. These are um, lettuces that I'm letting go to seed. I'm going to save the seed from them. It's starting to flower, which is nice. But this one, it wasn't, as you can see, over where it's actually planted. It's not very healthy. It wasn't very healthy to begin with. But since the mesh came off, it started crawling along here. And now we have another big, beautiful blue banana. There was more than one attached to this. There's a little one there that's quite it's stunted. It's still okay. It's stunted. It's not rotted, I don't think. But this one's going to be beautiful. So all in all, I think I've got three blue Hungarian squash. I've had about eight or nine gem squash. I've got one, two, three, four, five Hubbards. I don't know how many um, 
blue bananas I've got. It looks like about six. So there's one there, one there, and yeah, about three or four over there. So it's not been too bad a return. Although everything could have been bigger and probably more prolific. But in saying that, the curries have done well. A couple here. That one. There's one hiding in there. Another one over there. And of course, the other one that I forgot to mention, which I'm looking forward to probably the most. It's the first time I've ever grown a Marina di Chioggia. Um, successfully anyway. The ones I had last year didn't get to this stage at this one, which is absolutely amazing. But it's still nowhere near ready for harvesting yet. It's, well, it's getting close. That's getting The stem's getting quite woody now, as you can see. So it's not far away. But the plant that it's attached to is still very healthy and still growing. So I'll wait for that to die back a bit first. But the curries look fantastic. That one's, that's the biggest one. Looking forward to that. And there's another, another gem. The gems have been fantastic this year. You're only supposed to get four per plant and I've got two plants and I've had nine off of them so far. And there's still, I think there's three or four still on this one and two or three on the other one that I just showed you over the other side that's got the weird squashes. But the one, yeah. I know I said I would just finish on the other one but I need to come back here to this. That's fantastic. I'm so happy that I got one of those. Those were the ones I was waiting for this year. This is the, the Marina, and uh, sorry, not the Marina de Chogia. It's the one i just shown you. This is the um, Mosquito Provence. And it's got the beautiful shape. Pumpkin shape that I was looking forward to. So that's a uh, nearly, nearly another year of the squashes. I've got some different varieties to try for next year. I'm going to do a video about seed selection next week, maybe the week after. At the moment I'm doing, I'm, I'm getting in the chilli seeds for next year and I just took a delivery of those today. So I'll be doing a little sort of video of that tonight, explaining my selection process, what I'm going to be growing next year, why I'm going to be growing it, what I'm not going to be growing, why I'm not going to be growing that again. And, uh, yeah, so that should be fun. I'm looking forward to that one. It's always... People say the most exciting time of the year is the planting season or the harvest season or whatever. To me, one of the other highlights is the is the picking, which seeds you're going to be growing and then them arriving and then you working out what's going to go where for next year and all that kind of planning. So this is another exciting time for me and I'll be filming a video of that later on. But for the squashes... I think that's probably it. It's only going to be recipes from here on in. So anything that I cook with these, I'll film and I'll put recipes up just to let you know how I use them all as well, how I stored them, how I use them in the end, and how I eventually saved the seeds for some of them. Some of them I did isolate for next year, and some of them, as I showed you with the other gem squash, I'm going to just leave to... Um, surprise for next year because they're very promiscuous the cross and stuff and it, it is always interesting to see what you get as that gem squash actually showed with it not looking at all like a gem squash in any way whatsoever so that's that for this video um thanks for watching if you're enjoying the content please consider subscribing please give me a big thumbs up if you liked the video and i'll see you next time thanks for watching